them a big hand, guys. Can you do that? All right, so integrity. Sometimes integrity is the hard thing, but integrity is always the right thing. Sometimes it's hard to do something the right way, the God way, the righteous way. Sometimes that's really the harder thing to do, the harder option, the harder choice. And um, I'm going to tell you what I mean by that uh, in, in a few moments. You know, we've all had these times um, in our lives that we've kind of developed our stories about integrity. Some of those stories went real good. We're proud of sticking to what God said we should do. But then other times, or maybe we've got other stories that, you know, we didn't quite do exactly what we should have done. We had something less than integrity happening. I remember a story one time that my dad told me when I was a kid, that uh, actually when I was a teenager, and he told me about a college professor that he had one time. And that college professor genuinely really liked my dad, saw great possibilities through dad. At that point, dad really felt like he was going to spend his life on the road as a traveling evangelist, leading people to the Lord. The professor saw that gifting and that talent and that anointing on dad, recognized it, and just really had some great conversations with him over the course of his time in that class. And um, that meant a lot to dad. But one time this professor said these words to dad. He says, Doug, when you graduate, you know, we can propel your ministry worldwide. We can have you preaching in the best pulpits, the biggest pulpits. We can have you, you know, getting in front of the largest crowds, the best people out there, the coolest cities. But, Doug, it's going to cost you making sure that you send the birthday card to the key pastors in the nation just at the right time. Doug, it's going to cost you to make sure that your Christmas list saturates all the places you want to be. Doug, it'll cost you buying a sport coat for the right pastor. When my dad heard those things, he made the determination even as a young man, well, that cost is too high. Not to give those things, but to buy success. And I remember even as a young boy, I thought, wow, dad's got the goods. That's the right, that's the right stuff. That's integrity. That's the right stuff. And I want to be like that. I really want to have that. I always admired Dad for that. He was able to name the cost. At what cost will you get something? And for a lot of folks, that comes to a place that integrity ends up being what it costs you. Your integrity. In week three, I'm going to be talking about integrity. And the message I'm titling for week three is my word is my bond you know there used to be a day that you could seal a deal businessman on a handshake right but today you've got to have a string of lawyers 10 feet deep behind you because you just don't know there was a day where people could trust each other trust their word the bible says make your yes yes and your no no it's pretty clear Say what you mean and mean what you say. It's integrity. It's just one element of integrity, but it's integrity. And I believe God wants us to live as integrous people. The goal for the series is this. Is I want to show in God's word why he values his people having a heart of integrity and how he equips us to live through life's most difficult decisions and have strength and not compromise through those times. So, integrity is always the right way. I'm sorry, integrity sometimes is a hard thing, but it's always the right thing. And I believe with all of my heart that if we can live that life according to God's principles, it might be a difficult road, but it'll be a right road. So there's a definition I've got here of integrity that I just got out of like Webster's or something. Um, the definition of integrity kind of helps launch us into the rest of the ways we're going to look at things this morning. It's defined as soundness of moral character. Integrity is defined as soundness of moral character. It's the state of being whole and entire and undiminished and unimpaired. In other words, if something has integrity, it is its totality. It's its fullness. 
You can't have integrity and be partial. So when we're talking about the way we're made up, the moral fiber of man, the moral fiber of us, um, it needs to be about wholeness. On Thursday, um, Brandon Shelton, which is a guy in our church, uh, and I went to the Navy base, and we were briefed by some gentlemen in Southeast Command who had recently gone down to Haiti, which is where we're getting ready to take our missions trip in March. And these gentlemen who worked for the military were down on their trip in Haiti on behalf of the U.S. Embassy, and they were down there inspecting the foundations of bridges that four hurricanes in a row earlier this season had just compromised and beat up. So these gentlemen went down there and they went down and they saw the, the culture of Haiti and they saw the, the, it was already the poorest nation in the western hemisphere and just four brutal hurricane attacks or four storms have just done so much to this island. And they were there, watch this, to test the bridges in the area. Some of those bridges, at first glance, in pictures, they were still standing. By eyesight, it looks like you could have crossed them. But then he took his little red dot pointer, and he goes, Pastor Aaron, let me show you why this bridge is compromised and why it's lost its integrity. And I thought... Oh, you have my attention now. I can use this Sunday. (laughs) And he showed us where at one point, because they skipped an important part structurally at the beginning, when the storms came, when the floods came, it washed out under where there should have been pilings that went down deep into rock. You build your house on the stone, on the rock, right? right? Not on the sand. So the integrity was compromised. It wasn't whole. It was impaired. It was missing important key parts. And it didn't survive. God wants us to live lives of integrity. Can you say amen? Uh, Integrity is the same root word as the word integer. That means a whole number. So even mathematics kind of gives us an understanding or a definition of that. Um, More on a philosophical side of things. Our integrity is a peak into our hearts. It's a litmus test. It's an indicator. When you see how someone deals with something, if it's less than integrous, a business deal that's less than integrous, you're getting a peek into their heart. When you see someone violate the word of God, and maybe it's a habit or a lifestyle or somebody lies all the time and they just don't, they, you know, you see all of these, these, these things and you're, just, you're getting a peek into the heart. The heart needs to be changed. God values integrity in a great way. I'm going to tell you two things today, and I'm going to tell you how to win in this, so watch this. Um, Number one, sometimes integrity is a hard thing, but it's always the right thing. There is a verse in Exodus 23 that I want to show you real quick, but we have it on the screen first. Um, It says this, Neither shall you allege the example of many as an excuse for doing wrong. God cares about integrity. And in Exodus chapter 23, he gave us nine verses, and it was directly from God. He gave us nine verses to show us that he cared how we lived. And I want you to go there real quick, if you could, please. The the, the first quick place that we're going to go is in um, Exodus chapter 23. I hope you brought your Bibles. It's important to bring your Bibles to church. We have some, if you don't have one, that we can sure give to you. Exodus chapter 23, verse 1. 